Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this guide, I'm going to go ahead and show how we can clone a map level um, and take a red portal to it. Um, now this is going to be a quick and dirty example um, on a very basic level. It is quite a bit more advanced if you're trying to connect different entrances and exits as exits together, uh, as well as what acts can be used and things like that. Uh, but this will get you going and start understanding how map editing works in Diablo 2 Resurrected and let you start doing your own tweaks. Um, but with that said, let's just go ahead and roll right into it. Uh, so as usual, first place we're going to go is just go to our uh, mod folder and then also grab everything we need from Cask. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open that now. And uh, the first files we'll need are all of our text files for the different edits. Um, so we'll just go ahead and grab those. So the first one being cube main dot text. This is going to let us do our cube recipe for the red portal. Uh, we're going to need levels dot text. This is uh, to clone the level. Um, and then finally, we're going to need level press dot text. This is because we're going to be cloning a preset map here. Um, this will control the linking for that. Um, so we're going to be cloning World Stone from Act 5, where you kill Bale at the end of the game. Uh, it's a very simple level, not many entrances or exits, um, and it also just makes it convenient to easily see what's going on. Um, so for that, we're going to go to Data, Global, then Tiles. Uh, we're going to select Expansion, and then we're going to grab this combined DS1.bin file, and I'll explain why that's important in a minute here, uh, but we're going to go ahead and drag that out. Uh, and then the last thing we'll need is basically the HD version of uh, Worldstone, um, and that's going to be located in HD, ENV for environment, uh, preset, expansion, bail layer, and then finally at the bottom we'll see WStone01 here. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that out also. And we've grabbed everything we need. We can go ahead and close cast now. Um, so the uh, first thing we'll do is just go ahead and jump right into the text editing. Um, so I'm going to grab all those here. I'll just uh, open one and then I'll drag these in. All right, so we got all our files open. So we're going to go straight into levels.txt first. And uh, we'll just go ahead and span that out some, span the ID, we'll lock the top rows. And then I'm going to scroll to the very bottom. We're going to copy the world stone column. Uh, if you're using AFJ's editor, you can just go ahead and select the clone row option. Um, and then we're going to rename this world stone new. Uh, we're going to give it the next uh, level ID in the sequence. This is important. We'll use this several times. So just remember that it's going to be 137 for us. And then for example purposes, I'm going to go ahead and go all the way over here and where it talks about the string names, um, just so we know that we're definitely going into the new world stone and not the old one. I'm gonna go ahead and basically blank all these out um, and this will make it appear as void in game. Um, so we definitely know, you know we're in the new area. Um, and then the last kind of important thing we're not gonna mess with uh, in this video, um, but you will need to know for most maps um, is these viz and warp columns. Uh, these will connect or these will control how the level connects to other levels. So for this example, Viz0 has a value of 131, which uh, tells the game that uh, from level 131, which is the throne room, um, you can access the world stone as an entrance, and it uses a warp type of 81, which is essentially when you go through that uh, portal there. Um, but Again, you, we won't edit that in this video. It's just a quick and dirty example video, um, but you will need to take note of that uh, in the future. So we're all done here. We're going to go ahead and save that, and then we're going to go right over to level press dot text. And uh, so just like before, I'm gonna lock everything, expand it, go down to the bottom, and we're just looking for the world stone entry. Um, so this defines again because it's a preset map. You know the world stone layout never changes. Um, that this is the map file to use and the settings and all that. So we're just gonna again like before clone everything, and then we're just gonna name it for our own sanity, and we're gonna give it uh, the next definition and sequence which for us is 1091 and then we're going to link it to the level 137 uh, that we created just a second ago so go ahead and set that and then uh, we'll go ahead and change it later just to show you kind of what happens in resurrected but for now we're going to go ahead and leave it using the normal 
a world stone ds1 file which is like the actual map file from legacy version um, so that'll give it all it's like collision and monsters and objects and stuff um, but we're going to leave that for now and then change it later to show you what's going on so i'm going to go ahead and save that and then finally we're just going to go add our new recipe so I'm not going to bother naming everything. This is, again, just a, a quick video. Um, so we're just going to enable it, set it to ladder, because it's just kind of a habit of mine. Uh, give it one input of PSC, which is a town portal. And then we are going to make the output red portal quantity equals 137. Um, so again, that's the level ID of our new world stone level. So that's what we put as the quantity. And now when we cube a town portal scroll, it will take us directly to our new level. And we're gonna go ahead and save that. Uh, now everything is enabled, but because of resurrected um, reasons, we have to kind of unlock something now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, come on, there you go, computer. Um, so if we go to our global file and then to tiles, expansion, this bin file here, um, we need to kind of take care of. So in resurrected, they keep almost like a backup um, of the different map objects and settings. And because we're trying to uh, modify those, we need to kind of blank that out. This might not be strictly needed for new levels, but it's definitely needed for old, uh, existing levels. So we're just going to go ahead and do it and show you how it's done anyway. So for that, all we're going to do is just open up a blank document in Notepad. We don't need to type anything or do anything with it. Uh, we're just going to try to save it over that. So um, if we go here to our global tiles expansion, blah, 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 we want to save as type to all files. And then we're just going to select that, that bin file and overwrite it. And now that that's overwritten, you can see the size is zero kilobytes, which is exactly what we want. So the game will still read this modified file because it exists in our mod, but because it's blank, it won't actually pull the data and you won't get any uh, conflicts from, from that. Um, but with that said, we are all set. Um, everything's unlocked. Um, we already pulled our HD asset file to show all that. So we're just gonna go ahead and start the game. And uh, because this is an ACK5, uh, level that we've cloned. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to Act 5 in order to use the red portal. Uh, this is a restriction of resurrected. All right, so we're in Act 5 and let's go ahead and make our custom portal. And there we go. So you can see uh, it says void because, again, we changed those strings so it doesn't have anything for it. So let's go ahead and enter our void. And here you go. So it is an exact clone of Worldstone. We're in our new level. It's void. And as you can see, because Bale and such is included in the map itself, then we are also fighting Bale. It's a perfect copy. Um, so now that you've seen how it works, we'll go ahead and show you some of the other limits real quick. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go back to levelpress.txt and we're going to pretend this is more realistic and you're actually cloning uh, maybe a level you made, you've edited a couple of things, something like that. Uh, so we're going to change it to say, hey, we're using wstone02.ds1 and uh, let's go ahead and just save that. That's the only change we need to make for that. And then we're going to go back to our files. And now what we want to do is uh, actually go back to cask. We're going to pretend like we, we did all this before, like we were supposed to. All right. And so we're going to go grab our, our clone world stone level just for argument's sake. So again, we're going to go to the bale layer. We're going to grab our wostone1.ds1. And uh, put this in a bale layer folder. And then again, we're just going to rename this, even though it is an exact clone of Worldstone, we're just going to rename it Wstone02. Uh, but if you'll notice, we do not have a JSON file for Wstone02. 
and I'm going to leave it like that just so you can see why. So just like before, we're going to go, go ahead and launch into the game um, and get that red portal spawned to our new level. Again, now it's telling it to use a, a new map file for that. And I accidentally loaded the wrong one. Sorry about that. Have it. All right, make another portal again, go back to void, and now you can see it loaded the map file, so the collision and stuff is still working. Uh, Bale is still here, um, all the objects like the fire torches are still here, but because there's no HD portion for it, um, none of the details are here, none of the environment is here, none of the pillars, anything like that. So um, you need to edit both of them um, to get everything working. Uh, so, just go ahead and show you. Obviously, all we need to do then for that is go back in and rename that file to, or that JSON file, um, and everything will be back to how we want it. Um, now, obviously, when you're doing completely custom maps, um, this is going to be a ton of effort creating a new custom JSON entry right now. Um, it's just a, a lot of copy and pasting. Um, there aren't any good tools to edit it automatically, um, so it's just going to be a lot of work. So I do recommend smaller edits um, to get yourself familiar with everything. But now that we've uh, changed the JSON to match our new map file name, now we should once again be able to load into our new level and see it correct once more. And there we go. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed everything, and sorry if it's a little longer video or a little sloppy, but uh, I hope you learned what you needed to, and uh, we'll be glad to help you if you have any questions. Take care, and have a great day. Bye.